APCO Educational Topic Number 46, Dysmenorrhea. Meet Aunt Flo. She is a popular euphemism that refers to a woman's menstrual cycle. In this video, we will discuss what happens when Aunt Flo turns painful. The objectives of this video are to define dysmenorrhea and to distinguish primary from secondary dysmenorrhea. Describe the pathophysiology and identify the etiologies of dysmenorrhea. Discuss the steps in the evaluation and management of dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea is defined as painful menstruation. It can be severe enough to prevent a woman from performing normal activities, and it can be accompanied by diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, headache, and dizziness. Primary dysmenorrhea has no clinically identifiable cause, so here's Aunt Flo with a Molotov cocktail of prostaglandins. Secondary dysmenorrhea, on the other hand, does have a clinically identifiable cause, so here is an endometriosis cop handcuffing Aunt Flo. Primary dysmenorrhea is thought to be secondary to excess production of prostaglandins, which leads to painful uterine muscle activity. The greatest incidence is in women in their late teens and early 20s. Let's spend a moment to discuss the pathophysiology of primary dysmenorrhea. Prostaglandins are smooth muscle stimulants. Prostaglandin F2-alpha is produced in the endometrium. Progesterone increases production of prostaglandin F2-alpha. And don't forget that progesterone levels peak at or soon before the start of menstruation. Secondary dysmenorrhea has a clinically identifiable cause. It is more common as a woman ages because it accompanies the rising prevalence of causal factors. Common causes include endometriosis, adenomyosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, and leiomyomata. Let's now move to evaluation and management. Take a careful history. Find out if it's lower abdominal or suprapubic area, if there is fatigue, low back pain, or headache, which are common, and ascertain how much the pain is interfering with their daily activities, such as school, work, or sports. On physical examination, look for any clues for clinically identifiable causes of secondary dysmenorrhea. Irregular enlargement of the uterus suggests fibroids. An enlarged boggy uterus suggests adenomyosis. Painful uterus sacral nodules or restricted motion of the uterus suggests endometriosis. Also remember to screen for gonorrhea and chlamydia to evaluate for infection. Let's now move on to management. One of the first-line treatments is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for these are prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors. Other management options include heat, such as heating pads, exercise, psychotherapy, and reassurances. Oral contraception is effective for it suppresses ovulation and thus stabilizes estrogen and progesterone levels with a resulting decrease in endometrial prostaglandin production. The therapy for secondary dysmenorrhea is similar to the therapy for primary dysmenorrhea with primarily symptomatic therapy and if possible therapy should be directed at the underlying condition. This concludes the APCO video on dysmenorrhea. We have defined primary and secondary dysmenorrhea, discussed pathophysiology, and discussed steps in the evaluation and management of dysmenorrhea.